All right. Hello, everyone out there. Um, Amanda Harris here coming to you from Reconnect in Richmond, Virginia. And I am joined today by my friend, Dr. Martin Katz. Martin is a family practice and sports medicine physician from Charlottesville, Virginia. He works with downtown family health care. And just for the benefit of our viewers, Martin, I thought I might give folks a little background on how I know you. Um, sure. Martin and I met many years ago working with ACAC Fitness and Wellness uh, in Charlottesville, Virginia. And then when I moved over to Richmond, I kind of lost touch with you. Um, but we were spontaneously reunited at our mutual kids mountain bike races in April. April of this year. It was so fun to um, literally be out there chasing my daughter around while she was getting ready for her races and then run into who other than Dr. Katz himself, not just as the physician, but the physician on a bike, <laughs> which was awesome. <laughs> and then you had two sons in the race too, right? Had a couple sons. Yeah. And just an absolutely beautiful location in Stokesville. Couldn't be much better. Yeah, it was fantastic. So anyway, that gave us the chance to catch up and we decided we'd like to do this interview so that our viewers can learn a little bit more about you, Dr. Katz, and hear about your philosophy on healthcare, exercise, nutrition, et cetera. Um, but why don't we start with a little history about you? Tell us about how you got into medicine and what your unique journey has brought you to here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for giving me the platform. I love to chat and certainly love to talk to people about prevention. I am a huge advocate of prevention, as you know, and feel like that's a voice that is possibly a little understated, so understood, but understated. And I think we need to start screaming it a little louder um, so people really understand that there needs to be a complete shift from a disease management process to a preventative process. And so what I mean by that is I was trained in a conventional setting and went to medical school and probably got, if I'm lucky, five lectures on exercise physiology, nutrition, the benefits of sleep, spirituality. I certainly didn't have any um, knowledge on the gut microbiome and the importance of that. And so, you know, going into the first six years of my medical practice, I've decided to go to family practice. So I did a family practice residency, went into primary care and just saw that that was um, wonderful to be able to be involved in people's lives, but really limited in what we had to offer people from a toolbox perspective, as in, you know, what, how can we get people better? Well, we don't really. We really just manage people's diseases. And, you know, if we send somebody to a specialist, they're pretty much doing the same thing or worse, they're, you know, um, cutting out things that maybe should not have been cut out so quickly, giving people some hope, some help along the way to see if maybe occasionally we can manage it um, and move people more towards a primary secondary prevention, which isn't always possible. I mean, surgeons are wonderful. I'm not taking anything away from them. They certainly help us out all the time, but there's times that maybe we, there's some other things that we could do uh, from an orthopedic standpoint, from a gut perspective, from a thyroid perspective, it doesn't necessarily need to go under the knife quite so quickly if we give people hope and help and uh, look to, again, primary, secondary prevention. Absence of disease, of, right? Right. It's more exactly. than absence of disease. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's a big point. Absolutely. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. we've mentioned this before. Health is not the absence of disease. It is something very different. And I don't know how you were when you were younger, but, you know, I'd go out on a massive run or a massive, a big ride and, you know, hammer it and feel great. And so I'd go out and get a barbecue hamburger sandwich with like <laughs> banana pudding and, and, a, and a soda and feel like I was doing great. And what's so misinformed about that is I just stressed my body out so much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a hormetic stress. We can talk more and more about exercise and why it's so incredibly wonderful, but it still is a stress. Sure. And so if you're not supporting your body, eventually you'll break down. And we see that all the time in these athletes who are overtrained and, you know, have these overuse injuries and they're like, what's going on? Well, let's talk about it. When are you going to sleep? When are you at, you know, when are you eating? How are you eating? What are you eating? Mm 
And so that's sort of on the other side of what you were talking about with the athlete who's overtraining and using poor nutrition habits. We also have these folks who, you know, are sort of, they're, they're doing movements and they're doing activities, but they don't really understand how to keep their bodies healthy enough to continue to do those movements and activities through a lifetime and maintain their health. Um, yeah. Do you mind kind of speaking to that in terms of um, the, the way that exercise and movement really contributes to that picture of health that you and I were discussing, not the absence of disease, but, but like actually right. contributes to true health. The benefits of exercise are so crucial and done well are magnificent and there's so much to exercise one is our understanding of what it takes so some people just like i don't have the time to exercise well, why not exactly and we can talk about that as well but it, it's imperative to be moving does it have to be an hour at a gym absolutely not no there's so there's so much more to exercise and what exercise does is it helps our cells be the best that they can be so your cells aren't always working correctly or well. They, there are maybe some hiccups in the cell. And what exercise does is it actually challenges the cells. It's, again, a stress. And the word hormetic is very important. So if your cell is not working well, you're continuously making energy, right? Well, you make more energy when you're exercising. And that energy is used to propel you. Mm -hmm. The side product of that um those reactions are oxidative stress, right? So these hydrogen peroxide, these superoxide radicals. And if your cell is working really well and you've given the cell all the tools it needs to be healthy, the cell will recover quite well and obviously does that much better when you're younger than older. And so this speaks to that because we build this oxidative stress and we may talk about this later. And so this, this idea of this balance is really important within the cell. Now, if the cell isn't keeping up, it's the mitochondria is damaged or the DNA or the Golgi apparatus or some part of the cell is damaged, mm -hmm. you then signal, hey, I'm not quite right. And that's where the stress comes in. And that's where the hormesis comes in. So then you're alerting the rest of the body, which you are a system. And so your system is working beautifully together. So the immune system will come in and change what it needs to change, recycle the mitochondria, what's called mitophagy, recycle parts of the cell called autophagy, or if the cell's just no good, if it's just damaged and non, you know, there's no real need to put any more um, investment in the cell, it's gone and that's called apoptosis. Yeah. And you want apoptosis. And so this is the hormetic stress of exercise. This is one of the things that exercise does very, very, very well, mm -hmm. as well as increasing your cell's ability to relate to uh, sugar. So for uh, transport across the cell membrane, so you don't get insulin resistant, uh, something called BDNF, brain derived neurotrophic factor. So your cells, your nerve cells are really healthy, sleeps better. There's so many beautiful, incredible benefits to exercise and what it's doing yeah. for the cell. So, you know, I, I talk to my patients ad nauseum about um, exercise and certainly my older folks, you know, most people don't realize, well, they probably realize, but don't know the the understanding that after age 30, so into your fourth decade of life, you lose 10% of your muscle mass. It's well known. It's called sarcopenia. Um, and so if you're 70, that's three decades of muscle loss. That's possibly 30% of your muscle that is now lo no longer viable. You've atrophied unless you're keeping up with it. Unless again, you're keeping up with it. Yep. Right. Yep. So, so yep. you know, and so most people aren't. They're sitting, they're working too hard. They're, you know, you we all know you go from your bed to your yep. car, to your desk job, back to your car, yep. back to your chair in front of the television to bed and you're, you know, hit repeat. And, you know, people don't think there's time for exercise. I mean, I did a little something this morning. I didn't have, I've been a very busy day. So I did a little five minute uh, workout. I loved it. I felt great. Yep. Um, and I'll hopefully have another, you know, I'll have, hopefully I, I will make time for another five if I get really lucky, I might be able to go for a 20 minute bike ride, um, you know, depending on how my day works out and what I need to do with the four, my four children, my wife coming back home, um, <laughs> you know, so there's the all these things. You're juggling. putting it in. Like you've got all right. those plates. Oh, I, there's no question. I'm not, because yeah, I've got a six year old. Sometimes yeah, we have I've got a, <laughs> yeah, 
I've got a six-year-old. I'm going to be a 65-year-old dad at his graduation. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be, and, and I want to be appreciating him and possibly his kids in my old life. I don't want to be the guy sitting on the sideline like, hi, I'm going to, you know, sit in the air conditioning or the chair, you know, right. I want to be involved yeah, in traveling. And no, I don't want to be that guy. And yeah. there's so many people, unfortunately, that's, you know, where they're at and no fault of their own. There's just not enough people screaming that this is the way to treat your patients and your people because we don't get any training in it again. You know, right. If I, if well, I got also, five, you know, the other piece of this that I think you and I discussed when, um, when, when we talked by phone about this interview is that uh, the exercise piece, well, and the nutrition piece that we're going to touch on here in just a moment, um, really require people to be active about this. They have to not just participate, but they have to be very proactive to make these, these lifestyle changes. Um, and it's so much easier to have some sort of a passive, can we say therapy, you know, to take a pill, or to, you know, to, sure. to, to have somebody work on you, right? Like I, I couldn't tell you how many times somebody comes in and they say, you know, can you fix this in my body? Right. And I have to look at them and say, I'm not a mechanic. I'm a facilitator, right? I'm going right. to show you how you're going to work through this and manage this, but I can't fix you. <laughs> right. This is, this is your right. body, you know, yeah, you yeah you're going to be able to fix this. So, um, so I think there's so much of this that's difficult because we're asking people, we're putting the onus on those, on those patients or in my case, clients. Um, yeah. How dare you? Yeah, right. <laughs> we're asking a lot of them, but, but that's yeah. really what it requires, right? We've got to, we got to take care of our own bodies. So, so on that note, let's talk a little bit um, about how nutrition contributes to this, this picture of health. Again, not the absence of disease, but like true health, which is something so much bigger, right? So, so let's talk about the nutrition piece a little bit. The other part of us, this whole gut microbiome that is incredibly important, you know, these trillions, quadrillions of cells, we are trillions, they're quadrillions. So we're actually more bacteria and virus and parasite and fungal than we are human. Um, these cells require us to feed them and feed them well. And our cells require the same because all these processes take minerals and vitamins and um, phytonutrients mm -hmm. to, in my books, work optimally. So when you look at what, for what drives disease, mm -hmm. there's, numerous things, but our big understanding at this point is oxidative stress yeah. and inflammation. And the two are likely together. So yeah. again, I was mentioning earlier, this ability of your cell to communicate that's oxidative stress. And you're like, why, why do we make that if that's important? Well, because our cells communicate that well, that's the system know that things aren't quite well, if that cell is unable to balance it. So we all know that if you sprain or injure or um, lacerate, there's redness and there's swelling. Right. Well, that's inflammation. That's acute inflammation. And thank God for that, right? Mm -hmm. We absolutely need that to yep. heal. Part of the healing well, process. It's part of the healing process. Mm -hmm. Well, our cells can continue to signal that if we haven't balanced this oxidative stress, they can continue to signal that, mm -hmm. but we just are in so many places, there's only so much a system can do if it's being overworked that some of it's just kind of going to get ignored and you're going to now develop chronic inflammation. Right. And that's what drives chronic disease. That's what drives hypertension, diabetes, unfortunately, dementia, this incredibly fast, quick rising uh, disease that we're seeing Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. It's, it's, it's unfortunate how much we're seeing it on the rise. And there's definitely data on that, that this is a, an avoidable disease yep. uh, for sure. And in some people more easily than others. Um, and so here we have these diseases and these cells, and we're asking the body to do so much, but yet we're not supporting it. You know, if I, if our dad or mom, parents, should I say, came to us at 18 years of age or 16, rather, when we can drive and say, here's a car, it's the only car you're going to have for the rest of your life. You, there's not, you're not going to get another car. How well would we have to treat that car? Right. Like amazingly well. Well, this is the only body we're given at zero age. Mm -hmm. And yet we abuse it more so oftentimes when we abuse our cars and we take better cares. We do more system management on our, on our cars. People ask me, why do I have to come in for a physical 
once a year. Well, we should probably be talking more than that, like every other month. Right. What are you, you know, yeah. as a facilitator of health, what are you doing to support your health? Or at least with a well coach or somebody that you're, you know, improving this understanding until we get to a point where we've now paradigm shifted to this is a no duh. So let's um let's go back to the this notion of oxidative stress. You know, you touched on it when we talked about exercise, because exercise can create some oxidative stress. Obviously, stress at work, stress at home can create oxidative stress, lack of sleep can create oxidative stress. So we've 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 talked a little bit about how that can create damage in a cell. And you you have you kind of brushed on the fact that nutrition can actually help to counter that to a degree. What do we do to support ourselves? via nutrition and and the problem man and you know this is there's so much information out there what's the right. best you know what's the best nutrition to follow right and so this is a very very tricky very um, um difficult um discussion because people want to do what they want to do what feels comfortable to them and i'm all for that right mm -hmm. i think we can all agree that you likely want to limit processed foods Right. Um, so you want to stay out of the middle of the grocery stores. Then there are some things within the middle of the grocery stores, certainly. But, you know, if you're picking up a box, as Michael Pollan, he said, you know, if, if there's things on that box that your grandmother wouldn't recognize as food, put it back. Put it back. You know? I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if you can't pronounce the word, put it back. Right. You know, yeah. if you can't recognize it as something food-like, you know, yeah. so probably not, not something you want to be putting into your system. Again, occasionally, maybe, but for the most part, we really want to be looking at these labels and understanding, is this good for us or is it not? Another thing Michael Pollan said, eat food made by plants, not in a plant. In other right. words, you know, a refinery or something yeah. somewhere. You yeah. know, th these are important things to understand. So sort of stay out of the middle of the vials unless you're going into them for a specific purpose. Stay in the produce, stay in these areas. But if you look at dairy, I mean, you know, dairy can be pretty good or not. Um, you know, as far as the omega-3, 6, 9 balance, if you're getting a cow, or dairy from a cow that's being fed a bunch of corn, not a staple in a natural cow's diet, right. it's omega-9, 6, 3 ratio is going to be so off. Yep. And that's going to unfortunately not support inflammation. That's going to drive inflammation. Right. Which again, is what ox too much oxidative stress does. It drives inflammation. Mm -hmm. So these foods that you find in the produce and and possibly frozen, possibly canned occasionally um, um, in these areas, these foods have tremendous phytonutrients, mm -hmm. um, tremendous flavonoids, uh, vitamin C. All of which fight oxidative stress, right? These are our all of these that help fight. About. Mm -hmm. or balance rather, because you don't, it's not necessarily a matter of fighting it because you make it. It's a matter of being able to balance, balance it. it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And that cell that does that is, you know, the cell that's going to be doing just fine. So giving that cell, these flavonoids and these antioxidants, uh, yeah. these, and these, um, again, vitamins that do really well to fight this is really where you want to put most of your effort and time. Right. So, you know, can you do that on a keto diet? Absolutely. You can eat high fat, low carb on it and have lots of vegetables, not much fruit. And I kind of do like fruit. But again, if you want to do a keto approach yep. because you've got cancer or you've got diabetes, yep. go for it. But just understand you still need to be doing a wide variety of vegetables. Paleo, no question. You can easily do that. Mm -hmm. Vegan, of course you can do that. But you know, vegans that eat, you know, cookie dough, pasta, right. and bread. That's exactly and, right. Yeah, yeah right. It's vegan, and, and, they're vegan, right? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'm vegan, I'm healthy. Well, no, what, what, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. You know, and at night, and when, do you, and when do you time these meals? So are you, are you eating barely anything through the day, a lot at night? And so now you're interrupting your sleep, um, right. you know, mm -hmm. you, your indigestion, GERD, all these things you know, that doesn't work out well, even though you may have the best nutrition, it may not be that good for you. So you really need to understand, you know, what your meal timing is, what you're putting in and, and how you're doing it and how you're supporting this beautiful cell that makes you right. And, you know, love that person. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. That's the other thing, you know, I, I generally tend not to ask this question in my practice. Mm -hmm. I do ask it, but I'm very careful in asking it. 
because I can't tell you the amount of time, Amanda, this has created tears, but how many times or when I've asked this question, do you love yourself? How few people have even begun to think about that. Hmm. And if they, if you do ask them, it's, it's tears because most people just, you know, haven't gotten to that place yet where they've really tried to understand who they are, why they are, yeah. what they're doing. And, you know, to support that beautiful you, you know, they're so worried about their kids or their husband or their job, or they find their identity and their church, again, job, this, that, the next thing. And they're like, well, have you taken time just to love yourself and treat right. yourself right? Well, no, I'm too busy working, you know, too busy eating crap and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I haven't really. Well, right. we need, we really need to change that, you know, that conversation and right. start. And it's not a narcissist. I'm not a fan of narcissism no, at all no. or I, egocentrism, yeah. but it, it is really important. You know, the way I look at it, if you really want the best for yourself, you're going to want the best for your community. You're going to want the best for your nation. And that comes, you know, with a certain intention. And hopefully civility where you realize, well, okay, so if this person doesn't necessarily agree with the way I do, they want to be keto, I want to be vegan, great, we can sure. still understand that they're not doing refined foods, there's commonality there, hopefully no, they're sure. not doing refined foods, not doing sugar, we can agree on that, yeah. the rest of it, maybe, maybe not, but hopefully they're intentional about what's good for them, so let's high five and go eat a meal together and just appreciate that we're doing differently, we don't, as long as we're right for ourselves, yeah. And um, again, we don't have to agree. You can find commonality, hopefully somewhere else. If you can't find any commonality, well, there's plenty of people you can. And so go hang out with those, build that community and have fun. And then you'll want better things for your nation, just a healthier nation. So again, I feel like it's got to, that conversation has got to start there. Yeah, that's so. kind of that whole, you know, put your oxygen mask on first before you assist. Someone. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, yep. It's always so true. That gets applied to everything, I think. Or it should probably. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> a lot of things. So, so I want to give you a few moments to tell us a little bit about your newest venture, which is sort of on that nutrition side. Um, it sounds like you've kind of dived into this whole realm of, of really trying to support that wonderful cell. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, thanks. So there's actually two. I have two. I'll, I'll, oh, you have I'll, two I'll, now. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I'll talk about maybe the first one first is my book. Oh, so, yeah. So, you know, trying to relate to kids. I mean, the adults, you can kind of get them to understand oxidative stress and inflammation and, mm -hmm. you know, cells and what they're creating and oxygen, mitochondria. Most people by this time have been through biology and understand that. So adults, you can, a lot of kids have, and especially young kids who I'm really trying to impression because yeah. they will nag their parents about eating healthy mm -hmm. and their parents will change or not smoking or what have yeah. you. So I love that's having this conversation. Well. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I absolutely mm -hmm. love it. Unfortunately, it's why part of another reason that I run so far behind my clinic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, you know, I was, tr I'm, I was trying to figure out ways to relate this to my kids, my kids, as well as my kids in my clinic. And I started talking about composting and what would a worm like a Twizzler or a Snickers bar would it really like, you know, a, you know, squash and, you know, things that really become soil and things that are easier to process what what do you want in your compost? And kids would sort of look at me like, huh, I'm from the city. What are you talking about compost? And so, <laughs> so, you know, so then I just trying to think about other ways. And I came up with this, why are incredibly wisdom? And basically it's, you are incredibly awesome, um, but I've left out the vowels. And the only way to put the vowels back in is to eat your fruits and vegetables. And so I talk about the fruits and vegetables, what they offer the human body. And so I go through the A, B, C, the A, E, I, O, U vegetables. Uh -huh. uh, my wife, Sarah, has created some recipes around the A, E, I, O, U vegetables. Uh, myself, my wife, my kids have come up with some quirky little rhymes. But hopefully the book will be out in the next three to six months. We have an illustrator and uh, somebody's going to publish the book. The illustrator has done an amazing job. That's exciting. I'm really, I'm really excited about that. What's the title yeah. of it so we can look for it? Well, it was going to be Why Er in Kribli Wissam, but now it's probably going to be um, making a magnificent you. I like it. Yeah. All right. So by eating your fruits and vegetables, a little tag along. Well, yeah, um, I love it. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm going to have to pick up a copy of that from my little yeah. girl. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. But um, so anyway, so that, that's one of the projects. The other one is, you know, much bigger. 
the mission of our company is to look at what drives, well, one, what supports health, mm -hmm. um, but also what drives disease. And so far, we're on three things, and we'll continue to explore and continue to build. But um, the three things are oxidative stress. So we feel like we have the molecule that helps to balance that, and that's sulforaphane, because again, it's nature's strongest turn on of the NRF2 axis, which again, balances oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. um, two is inflammation, um, drives disease, no question. And we are very proud to recently get a patent on a process that gets curcumin into the cell um, or into the body in a way that gets it to the cell so it can actually work. And curcumin is a brilliant molecule that blocks inflammation or a big, ox a big inflammatory process called NF-kappa B and uh, curcumin is nature's strongest uh, molecule that does that. Mm -hmm. And then there's another um, uh, way that we drive disease and that's called senescence and cell senescence. Mm -hmm. And that's as we get older, our cells, instead of going through apoptosis, remember we talked about that earlier where the cell just undergoes programmed cell death. Yeah. It just, it's not able to do that. It's changed enough that it doesn't do that. It just sort of sits around and creates this ongoing inflammation. And we think that's a big driver of dementia, osteoarthritis, all these disease inflammatory processes is cell senescence, uh, where these cells have lost their idea of who they are, what they are, and are still creating inflammation. And then we have some other supplements um, to help boost the immune system, obviously, with all the things that are going on with this pandemic, we, we felt like we should come out with something that would help support the immune system. So if folks want to learn more about your supplements, where could they go? Thanks for asking. Yeah. Um, so probably www.brockbrocelite.com. Um, so that was www.brockelite.com. But, you know, continue, continue exploring, continue reading, continue to uh, want to find the best you. And again, that's uh, not necessarily easy. And if you stop learning, please understand that, um, Hopefully that's on your deathbed because there's, there's so much out there yeah. and don't take yourself too seriously. That might be another thing, you know, just enjoy the, more. enjoy the journey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> enjoy the journey. Listen to others, appreciate what they have to say, you know, and if it's, you know, not in line with yours, that they don't have to agree with you. You don't have to agree with them, you know, just enjoy the discussion, um, be civil and uh, yeah, try not to take yourself too seriously. Yeah, definitely part of health as well. So Dr. Martin Katz, thank you again for joining us today. Appreciate Thanks. all of your really excellent in-depth explanations about these very complex processes, but you made it very easy to listen to and, and hopefully get folks um, you know, starting to understand how all of this comes together to form what we're calling health. Um, thank you so much and thank you to all our listeners and we will see you next time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amanda. My pleasure. Keep doing the good work. <laughs>